So what happened in the Batman comics after Nightfall? In one word, Troika. Batman Nightfall is one of the longest storylines in the Batman comics, lasting for almost two years before it came to an end. But even then the storyline was not officially over. After Bruce Wayne returned and defeated Azrael, he decided to take a break, and Dick Grayson became Batman. This was called Prodigal, the storyline that reintroduced Dick Grayson to the Batman mythos. Dick Grayson's time as Batman was very short, as Bruce Wayne returned for good and decided to make some changes. However, even with Bruce Wayne back as Batman, there were still lingering questions from Nightfall that remained unanswered. For example, what happened to Bane, the monster who broke Batman? Where did Alfred go to after he quit being Bruce Wayne's butler? And what did Bruce learn after that whole experience? Following Prodigal, DC Comics released Batman Troika, a four-issue story Line that shows us what Batman has learned from his past mistakes and how after Nightfall he decides to pay more attention to his own humanity. Troika was a very short storyline where Batman and Robin have to stop a group of Russian enemies from destroying Gotham City. Troika begins in Batman number 515, where Batman and Robin stop one of the Russians and learn that they have a nuclear device in Gotham. The biggest and most noticeable change in this comic is that Kelly Jones officially begins his run as the main Batman artist, a change that is extremely polarizing. The art of Kelly Jones is not for everyone, and his Batman is one of the most controversial takes of the character. Kelly Jones became popular among Batman fans after working with writer Doug Mange in Batman, Red Rain, the Elseworlds horror story where Batman fights Dracula. Jones's art was a perfect fit for that story, as he is one of the best horror illustrators in comic books. However, this ability to illustrate horror was not exactly well received in the main Batman title. Although Kelly Jones had done almost all the cover art for the Nightfall storyline, people were not all that enthusiastic about his work as an interior artist. His take on the human anatomy with exaggerated proportions and facial expressions was very controversial, but most importantly, people just couldn't get past his extremely long bat ears. Personally, I adore Kelly Jones' Batman art, but I have to be honest, maybe it wasn't a good idea to make him the main Batman artist right after Nightfall. And this is because Batman is supposed to have learned from that experience, and the most important lesson is that he needs to be less driven, to be in control of his obsession, and to be more human. Being Batman 24-7 is what caused his downfall, it is not healthy, and now he knows that he has to take some breaks for his own health. But Kelly Jones' art doesn't reflect this change. If anything, Batman looks even more obsessed and driven than before. The monstrous, inhuman illustrations of Kelly Jones do not reflect the more relaxed and human version of Batman that they were going for. But this contrast was clearly intentional. Starting here, the Batman title becomes a horror-oriented series, with Doug Mensch as the writer and Kelly Jones as the artist. There is a lot to say about Mensch and Jones' three-year run in Batman, but that is a topic for another video. Or maybe two. The second chapter of Troika happens in Shadow of the Bat number 35, where we finally get to see some character development from Batman, as he acts more humane and less intense. We see Bruce Wayne doing housework, and he even allows Robin some time off to let him focus on his personal life. The art was done by Barry Kitson, who makes Batman look very sharp and stylish, which quite frankly leaves me wanting more Batman art by Barry Kitson. Troika's third chapter takes place in Detective Comics number 682, a chapter that shows us how much Bruce has changed, how he takes some time to check on Robin, to make sure he is alright, how he realizes he is pushing himself too hard and decides to take a break, how he pays attention to his personal life as Bruce Wayne, and all of that with a renewed sense of humor. This Batman is someone who is able to apologize for his mistakes, hell, he even acknowledges that he makes mistakes. If that is not character development, I don't know what is. This issue is also the start of the new direction for Detective Comics. There is no big change in the creative teams as Chuck Dixon and Graham Nolan continue their stellar work, but starting here, Detective Comics pays a lot more attention to the detective side of Batman and the supporting cast of the series becomes much more prominent. 
This is to contrast with the Batman title, which will focus more on Batman working solo and the dark atmosphere of the mythos. Basically, Troika is the starting point for both Batman and Detective Comics to become their own independent series with a unique angle that makes them both different, but equally effective. The fourth and final chapter of Troika happens in Robin number 14, where Batman and Robin stop the cagey beast once and for all and save Gotham from a nuclear explosion. And that was that. To be perfectly honest, Troika is not among the most interesting or unique Batman stories at all. There is nothing that makes the story actually special, except for the changes that were introduced during the storyline. Even though the biggest change was in regards to character development, there is another very important change, and that is the introduction of the new Black Batsuit. This is a major visual change, as for the past 50 years of comics, Batman had worn the classic blue and grey tights. DC took this opportunity to introduce a black batsuit to the main comics for the first time. This batsuit was clearly inspired by the Tim Burton Batman movies, and because they were so successful, it allowed the comics to try something different. This black batsuit was showcased on all the variant covers for Troika, and it marks the beginning of a new age. The darker colors of the suit imply that this Batman is more serious than before, that this is not exactly a kid-friendly Batman. There isn't much of an explanation in the story other than Bruce thinking it was time for something new, and also him trying to be prepared and to stay one step ahead from his enemies. This change was also too similar to the death and return of Superman, where the Man of Steel returned with a black outfit after a long absence, but… You know what the difference is between you and me? I make this look good. This suit also included three sharp fins on the side of Batman's boots, which is a similar design to the Azrael Batsuit, but they weren't very popular and they disappeared immediately after the story. Troika marks the end of an era, the time when the classic version of Batman is put to rest and the new, updated look signifies another stepping stone in the evolution of the character. Starting in Troika, the Batcave adopts a new and permanent color. The Batcave has been a constant presence in the Batman mythos and it was almost always colored as this warm, welcoming place with yellowish slash orange tones. By the 1990s, this realistic approach to the Batcave was kind of outdated, and although many graphic novels and the movies had already used darker colors for the Batcave, it wasn't until the very end of Nightfall that the Batcave became permanently dark in the main comics. By the time Prodigal was published, the Batcave was was already redesigned with these new dark tones of blues and black, which gives the place an atmosphere of danger and seriousness that is only complemented by the new black batsuit that Batman starts wearing in Troika. Now, this is where I would normally end the video, because I have already covered the whole storyline, but DC Comics did something strange, but necessary. In the collected editions of Troika, they also included two graphic novels that are not part of the story, but that are actually necessary to close all of the plotlines that started in Nightfall. To answer the question of what happened to Alfred, DC published Nightwing, Alfred's Return, a one-shot graphic novel that takes place after Troika. In this graphic novel, we learn that after Bruce returned to Gotham during Prodigal, Nightwing went looking for Alfred. The old butler had returned to England, where he was reunited with an old lover, but he got mixed up in a massive conspiracy when this woman lied to him about their past. Alfred and Nightwing worked together to save the kingdom, and after that experience, Alfred realized that he actually missed working for Bruce Wayne and decided to return. This graphic novel was published four months after Troika and has no connection to the story other than Nightwing, who simply disappears from Gotham after Prodigal. And the second and final graphic novel in the Troika collection is Batman, Vengeance of Bane 2, The Redemption. This one-shot seeks to answer the question of what happened to Bane after Nightfall, and as the title suggests, this is the story of Bane's redemption, the story of how he overcomes his addiction to Venom, how he overcomes his fears, and how he becomes a free man. The story explores the psychology of Bane and the plot is quite similar to the first Vengeance of Bane, with Bane escaping from prison with help of some friends in order to reach his destiny. 
There is an encounter between Batman and Bane by the end of the story, but that is hardly a rematch. It's only there to let Batman know that Bane has escaped. Vengeance of Bane 2 was published six months after Troika, and it provides closure to all of the themes and plotlines that began in Nightfall. And with that, we also put an end to the longest Batman story event. Nightfall is perhaps one of the most important storylines in the Batman history, and it was the first big storyline that I ever read, so it was really nostalgic for me to go back and make videos about it. And just like Batman, I learned a lot after Nightfall. I am not sure what comes next in the channel, because there is just so much content to cover that I'm gonna need either a lot of time or a bit of money. So if you're feeling generous and you want to help me out, you can always join the wonderful people at Patreon who keep me motivated to make more Batman videos. Anyways, that's it for now, friends. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.